Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up everyone, this is Yarn from Orange Juice. Shoot us a comment down below on what video you think we should make next. Today we'll be teaching about how buildings pull pork. We'll also talk about the elusive piggy push. The pig push technique enables the hog to bypass buildings that are placed exactly three tiles away from the crown tower. To perform a pig push, knowing how to quick drop can help tremendously. Check out our video if you haven't already. Another concept you need to understand is how to pull pork with buildings. I'll be breaking it down into zones. The center is the most dangerous area a structure can be placed. It's referred to as the kill zone. When the hog aggroes onto any structure in the kill zone, both arena towers will be within range. All structures, including passive structures, can pull the pork into the kill zone. You don't have to worry about this area. It's the dead zone. Both arena towers are out of range. Even spear goblins can attack from across the river. This is the friend zone. The hog will just walk past structures planted in this area and go straight to the arena tower. Now that you have an understanding of the zones, let's talk about the more advanced pulled pork zone. There's the left pull zone and the right pull zone. The left pull zone will aggro at all directions. It's three tiles away from the right tower and two tiles away from the left tower. You can only piggy push from the right side. The same concept with the right pull zone. The hog will draw in like a magnet everywhere. It's three tiles away from the left tower, so you can only do a pig push from the left side. To execute a pig push, you want to plant the hog in the farthest tile in front. Then quick drop a small group of units like skeletons one tile beside the hog. If you look closely, this actually slightly pushes the hog. Skeletons are a great card too since they're cheap. They might be too slow to reach the tower, but it's the cheapest way to perform a pig push. Both goblins complement the hog since they can match the hog's very fast move speed. Melee goblins can be devastating since they offer high DPS to complement the hog. But the drawback is that they're more susceptible to splash. Spear goblins can chip away at a safe distance when facing splash units. They're less susceptible to splash. The pig push works behind too. The trade-off is that it gives your opponent more time to react, but the risk can be rewarding. The third melee goblin ignored the cannon and went straight to the tower. Teslas behave a bit differently. If the Tesla has planted two or less tiles from the river, you can't pig push. But when it's planted exactly three tiles from the river, you can pig push. When the Tesla has four more tiles from the river, you don't need to pig push, but you do need to plant the hog on the edge. The hog will go straight to the tower, but only if the Tesla isn't activated. I prefer to use small cost units, but you can get creative and piggy push with other units too. Occasionally and inexplicably, the hog will just hop over the bridge. It's completely unpredictable when he decides to do this. It's much safer to do a pig push than to hope he hops the bridge. Yarn, how do you counter someone that knows how to pig push? Well, you can pull with a second structure, but in most cases, that's a negative elixir trade. It's better to save your structure until after the hog crossed the river. Since the hog was pre-pig pushed, you need to counter by placing the structure less than three tiles away from your tower. It's much better than using two structures. Here's an example showing you how game-changing the pig push technique can be. Especially if you know your opponent has a lot of structures. My opponent expected to pull my hog into the cannon, into his mortar, then rocket my tower for the win. It's like chess, you have to be multiple steps ahead of your opponent. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe for more quality OJ.